Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. We are convened as the Provost of the School District District Board of Education. Uh, we're meeting at 280 West, 940 North in Provo, Utah. The time is approximately 5.05 .05 p.m. And we will begin with the roll call. Melanie Hall, Board President. Rebecca Nielsen, Board Vice President. Jennifer Partridge, Board Member. Tina Hales, Board Member. McKay Jensen, Bryce. Board Member. Me and Bryce, Board Member. <laughs> Terry McKay, board member. Derek Anderson, business administrator. Keith Mattel, superintendent. Is there a motion to convene? I move that we convene study session. Right. We are now in study session. We will begin with a construction update, and I'm going to turn the time over to Mark Wheeler, our director of facilities. Hi, everybody. <coughs> uh, as always, if you have any questions, and not only about these things that I'm sharing with you, about anything else, feel free to ask uh, whatever you, you have concerns about or questions. I just wanted to show you a couple of things, uh, starting with Tempview. Uh, just kind of some before and after progress pictures. You can see what the site looked like just this past October. Uh, and right here again, right is here, this is where the, the academic wing is going. If you go to that next one, Bonnie. And you can see where we're at as of the past week. Uh, there's a lot uh, happening, and not only with concrete slabs getting poured here on the interior, and more grade beams being poured and formed through these areas, and then underground electrical, underground plumbing, and different things. In a second, I'm going to show you a rendering. Can I ask a question before you yes. move on? Has the warmer weather and dry weather been helpful? Yeah. Yeah, they love it. Yeah. They're, any day we can go without a snowstorm, they're thrilled. So yeah, they, it, it's really helpful on projects like this. In a second, when I show you guys a rendering, just remember these two walls right here, and uh, if it'll kind of help you get a kind of a frame of reference for what's happening here. Go to the next one, Bonnie. This is just standing in the interior, looking back to the north, and again, you can see these patterned walls, the decorative masonry. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. That's the same as what's on the South Gym, right? Yes, yep, same pattern. So go, all right, so so this is one of the renderings that I wanted to share with you today. See these two walls right here? That's the two walls that you see standing right now on the north side of the academic wing. And so right here is Quell, down the right side. Here's the seminary building on the left, east side. So looking back to the southwest, this is what it would look like in the future uh, where we're finished. And some of these sections here on this upper level are science rooms uh, that will have great natural light uh, looking back to the north in different directions. So where's the bike parking? Uh, the bike parking will be other places closer to the main entrance around in, and I didn't bring that rendering today, but they'll, it'll, the main entrance will be opposite of this corner, so there'll be some bike places over on that side. What are those forms that are so high? They're so tall. The forms? Yeah. You know, All the scaffolding steel forms? Is that, I mean, they go up, they go yeah. like four or five stories. Yeah, so it's that that's for the masonry crews. Okay. And so they have to get that high to run grout systems, right, when they go down back through the grout to solidify those. I have a quick question, too. Are we looking at just terraced landscaping here? Or is there going to be any purpose to this? Is this going to be? Like it? Right here on this, this yeah. upper corner. Uh -huh. This will just be dryscaped and landscape accents on that upper northeast mm -hmm. corner. Is there a way for students to walk through that without ruining it? Not not in this corner, no. Yeah. The like the grades walking. the grade's steep enough here yeah. uh, that we didn't create any walkways. There's a walkway okay. that will come this way and back over there's an entrance over here, back behind that side, but that's there's it. There's a south entrance to the seminary building. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And again, we're doing our, our best to dryscape the campus as much as possible just to conserve water for the future. <laughs> a lot fewer are accidents. We're not on that slope. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Bonnie, can you go to the next? This is just another issue that we're dealing with. This is separate <coughs> from the uh, from the construction project, but this is a temp view. This is the elevator lift that's located in the Thunderdome portion of the building. Uh, and the reason I'm sharing this with you, I haven't even shared this with Derek yet, but last week after a basketball game, we had a couple of people that were stuck in this elevator. 
uh, it failed uh, again. We've spent so much money trying to repair this over the years. Uh, part of our problem is this. Uh, the Thunderdome was built in 99. The manufacturer of this elevator lift, so this is looking down uh, onto the platform. Uh, the manufacturer of this lift was out of business in 2004. So anytime we have to find parts to this thing, we have to go to competitors who just find these parts for us by luck in some warehouse somewhere. And so we're at a point now we've got to replace this lift. And so we're getting bids right now. In fact, there was some of the earlier today to look at this. Uh, we're trying to make it functional for the next couple of weeks. Well, honestly, the next two, three months, uh, because we won't be able to replace it until probably until we get the full new lift until sometime in May. But it's something that's not scheduled, and so we'll we'll share those budgets with you soon. Is okay. it functional right now? Not right now. Does no, that and mean we're not supposed to be in the Thunderdome because we're not 88? So they, they figured out different ways to help people get to where they need to go and, and unfortunately it's roundabout routes to get another doors uh, but right now this won't be functional at least for the next two to three weeks any other questions Bonnie can you go to the next one this is switching to custodial operations I just wanted to share this with you to give everybody a frame of reference of what we're trying to manage right now with the custodial side of things First of all, if you see any head custodians or anybody on custodial team, please tell them thank you. They are spread so thin right now. Uh, I want to give you a couple of examples. Westridge Elementary is just under 70,000 square feet. Uh, over the past couple of weeks, we've had one head custodian, one part-time person. That's a lot of square footage to take care of by two people, uh, by basically one full-time person, uh, and then somebody for 29 hours a week. Uh, Centennial, we've got 143,000 square feet plus. Uh, you can see how many students we have as of the last couple of weeks. Right now we have one head custodian, one assistant, and three part-time people. And it works out, that would work out if we were dividing up square footage, that's 28,000 square feet per person. That is just a lot of area to cover every single day. And unfortunately they're just not making it. It's impossible to cover that much space with that few people on a daily basis. So we're doing our best to rotate around. And, and do what we can to keep up and take care of key areas on a daily basis. Uh, for Provo and Tempe, in the past what we've done when we've had these situations, we would borrow help from other campuses. Right now we don't have that opportunity. And uh, Tempe and Provo High School, for example, as of today, our Tempe Unite team, custodial team, is down 12 people. Uh, our Provo High team is down 10 people. And that's just our night teams at both of those high schools. So when you think of about 400,000 square feet of both those campuses, it is a lot of area to cover and to be that, that low uh, of help. And unfortunately, we just cannot find people to apply. Uh, if you look right now on our website, we have a lot of openings. Are we only putting these on uh, our website? Or can we put them on other job yeah, opportunities? Jason can answer that. Yeah, so our postings are pushed out through five different services, and so they end up on several different places. One of the one of the main ones that we actually find a lot of help from is through the college, the local college boards. They get posted on all of those. Um, so we also recently have talked to all the supervisors about being able to potentially use other services like Indeed or those types of things. <coughs> the problem with that is just the expense per Per position so for an hourly position often it doesn't it, it's not as helpful as we want it to be but for a full-time uh, contractor position it can be helpful so but yes it's each of those five different services that we use push it out to many different places from each of the five and unfortunately we're just not having much luck Nate this is more of a Derek question but uh, you know how the, the, the tax rates fall, you know, property rates go up, uh, so the tax rates naturally fall. Is that uh, calculated with inflation? When yeah. the, 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 when you said the, the calculation in, in inflation, sorry, meaning like the adjusted rate yeah. is inflation just No, it is not. It, so what, they, what it does is it says, look, we're going to use flat dollars, okay? So 
let's say our pro all of the property value in Provo generates a million dollars, and then that let's say that property value doubles. Okay, all that all the rate does is drop down, drop in half, so to get to capture the same one million dollars. So there's no calculation in there for our cost, like our our in inflation Correct. increase, and so I mean we're facing what ten percent cost inflation. So the only way for us to Gather that, that back in is, is truth, and truth, and truth and taxation. Correct, correct. Okay. And that's the only way, really, we're going to be able to pay for all. I mean, we, this isn't just this department, it's every single department. Yeah. Correct. And, okay. Yeah, that's very correct. We're, I mean, you're, you're nailing on something that's, uh, <laughs> I've, I've been going out and meeting with all the schools the last this last month in January, and pretty much every school has said, you know, I, normally, I, for like next year, I'd love to say this is my request. My request is bonds. Like we just, we we have so much leftover money from just not being able to hire people based on our current salary schedule. And is that the salary schedule that's kind of set by us? And so really, that's that's on us to adjust that for the upcoming year. But it's such a slow process that we can't really adjust to the market. Is that kind of what? That's. Typically, I mean, if, 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 if you can make mid-year adjustments, but they're not to be some essentially for, for, for warning or for, for foresight saying that we're going to adjust it right now up a, a dollar, two dollars, whatever, but it's going to come with a tax increase next year. And you just have to eat the difference out of reserves the current year because we haven't adjusted any tax rates for it. So that's that's kind of the other tricky part is that because we don't have the ability to adjust tax rates mid-year to capture and start doing that, it, you kind of become locked into that once a year adjustment. Any other questions on this before I go to the last item? Mark, um, you have a you still have a number of openings for high school students, right? Who could potentially come and be sweepers in the evenings and those kinds of things? We do. We have a lot of those openings, and, and unfortunately, we've even had a challenge uh, with that age group. What's the minimum age? Yeah. We we 15? just we just it, 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 we've tried to keep it at 16, and we just had a conversation last week with Jason. To where we're now gonna we we notified head custodians that they could start looking for 14 and 15 year old uh, uh, help to see if that made a difference. One last thing, we had a bid this past week uh, for a project that, we'll, that uh, you've seen before in long-term planning, it will be for this next fiscal year, but it was for additional space down at our Technology Auxiliary Services building. Our, our estimate was 1.2 million. Uh, the bids came in just over 1.2. Uh, the, the accepted bid was 1.283. Uh, and so I'll be working with Derek here the next couple of weeks uh, because even though it's the next fiscal year, we've got to get some long-term lead items ordered. Uh, not to delay the project, so we'll be that'll be a project you'll see some updates on coming up soon. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to talk about the bond sale update. I'm going to turn the time over to Derek Anderson, our business manager. Okay. So right now, we are our bonds are slated to be sold on February 16th at 9 a.m. Um, so if you're interested in, in watching that process, it's kind of cool the first time because what happens is, is you're watching the screen and all of a sudden all these bids start coming in, filing in with the rates that you know they're willing to pay and, and the premiums and whatnot. But after you've seen it once, then but if you, anybody wants to watch it, it doesn't last long. It, it doesn't last like long. It. If, it, if, cool. if anybody wants to be part of it, I can send out. Uh, the, they're doing it over Zoom. Normally, they'd come here and do it around the table, but they've sent out a Zoom link. So, if anybody's interested, let me know, and I'm, I'd be happy to forward that on to you so you can join, join them. Who runs that? Is that Moody's? Uh, no, Zion. Uh, okay. So, do they actually use Zoom, or do they use a different platform? Teams, I believe, is what they're using. Okay. So. Okay. Any questions about the bond sale? Do people still have enough money? 
<laughs> we'll get the money <laughs> that we've requested. That, it's just that the rate. The, the unknown is whether or not. It will cover the cost, right? It will cover the cost. So we will get the money we've requested. And, and what, the way it works is they've got, you know, the par value is stated right now like $94 million. But you're, and you think, wait a second, the $94 million is not what we asked for. So the difference between par, the par value and the 110 is what they call premium. And so the par value and the premium together will make up the 110. And then the true interest cost, so you'll see like on the, at, on the, on the offering statement, it will say like a flat rate of like 5%. But because the premium's in there, the true interest cost drops down to like 2, 2.1. And so there's just some things like that that are just kind of unique to bonds. Um, but we will get the full 110 because if either one way or the other, it'll the premium will get bigger and the par will drop, or the par will go up and the premium will get smaller, and, and the interest rate is the offset. So it's about 2% so what we're expecting? I'm guessing somewhere our true interest costs, somewhere around 2.25. A little bit higher from where I last time. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other further questions? All right. I'll turn it over again to Derek to discuss policy 4202, electronic resources review. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is a, a policy that we're wanting to adjust for the our, our use of Chromebooks. They've kind of gone live one to one. Um, and what this policy is doing is it's widening the scope of if, a, you know, if, a, um, say, a, a Chromebook is damaged, this widens the scope of what we can charge. It lowers the minimum threshold, but also uh, o opens up the threshold to the replacement value. And so it kind of widens that range of what can be charged. So if, if say, a key falls off and needs to be replaced, we can charge the just a, a $30 amount instead of the $40 amount, which was previously there. And then, but now it also says if you know a kid breaks the Chromebook, then they would end up paying the replacement value, which I think is around 250 bucks, $300. And so that's kind of the, the the crux of the policy is it's widening that up, and then also um, it's it's not going to be we're not charging the schools for the fee. And, you know, that it's going to be, you know, on on the the parent or the family will be the one that gets that gets this ass, assess that, um, and then we will create a new program to really kind of gauge and see if the amount of damage that we're incurring is being recouped by the cost and going forward. Because right now, it's it's we have, we have to segregate that out. Are we seeing a lot of damage right now? Apparently, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much the cost that we're seeing? Uh, a lot. I can give you exact numbers if you'd like. But I, don't have okay. I know when I helped with out at Trumbull High School, the end of the school, there was a lot of missing cords. Yep. Between missing cords, picked off keys, broken screens, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's hard because we won't see a lot of the damage until they turn the, the computers in at the end of the year. They're pretty quiet about it until they turn it in. Can I uh, ask a question on this? And maybe I've missed it as, as a parent, but this is a parent kind of perspective question. Has there been uh, communication to parents saying, hey, if your kid messes up the Chromebook, they can, you can be charged? I don't remember ever seeing anything like that. And I think it would be good for parents to know. Because mm -hmm. I know I'm going to be way more picky with my kids knowing they're, and that I might have to pay 250 bucks. So from my understanding is as they check them out, there's something that they sign. We have to find okay, the that's yeah. where the communication is. Okay. Yeah. It's also in too. Okay. Registry. Go to McKay and then to Gina. So what's the approach with the the mm -hmm. legislation that goes in effect on curricular fee or uh, textbook fees? Textbooks, that definition includes, you so know. And that's what, so we're not charging a fee so we talked about the kind of the different routes, which is in, uh, in the event that, um, you know, like a, here's a, a fee, here's your Chromebook, and then we'll hold on to this and return it back to you. But that comes with a ton, tons of logistic nightmares. Yes. And so that's where we said, look, let's just call it a damage essentially surcharge. Okay. 
and that way it's it only charged if there's been damage. And then uh, the other thing we're, we're talking about is the replacement cycle of the Chromebooks and how much we would need to budget each year just to replace the cycle that we've got since we're pretty much one to one. Um, and so, you know, not that for next year, but probably for the year after that, um, with curricular and co-curricular fees, and that, that's looking, you know, about $55 million for the state, so your portion would need to cover almost, you know, you won't be able to tell a kid you can't have a new Chromebook if you damage it in the fees and pay. Yeah, they, and that's the thing, is that's the, going to be exactly the correct, the tricky part is, is we can try to collect on, hey, look, this is a fine that you're being assessed, but if they don't pay it, you have to give them a new one. We still have to give them a new one. There's not much we can really do about it, so. <coughs> that was one of my questions, was my parents wouldn't have been able to afford $250 a month. Uh, we didn't have yeah. We didn't have laptops back then. We didn't have electricity or we had <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Okay, so that answers that question. The other one is today in our PTA executive meeting, one of one of the moms talked about how teachers had had th their children in different situations where the teachers had had them loan their, their charger cord to another student and the other student loses it and she's just worried that she, she's like, I'm, if my kid loses it, I'm fine to replace it. But if the school is losing it at school, because there's been one of her other kids, it got lost at school. So are, are we going to have, I'm, I'm assuming we will have some way to kind of figure that out so we're not charging parents for something their kids did not do. Yeah, that's, that's a work through that. Yeah, we'll have okay. to work through that one. So I just need to ask it so I can tell them we'll work through that. Yeah. I asked the question and we will work through it. Well, I wanted to know the same thing. How do we know when it's damaged and how do we assess when it's just like it's an old Chromebook that just stinks? So it's usually a four year life. Because my son has had massive problems with his, and he keeps going to tech to get it fixed, and like he can't log on, and all these things. Like I don't want to be charged for something that's no, not. No, it, it's okay. it's typically you you can see what's you know if it, if a motherboard's going out, you know, or you know <laughs> something like that, then it's just that's going out. You know, it's going yeah. bad. But you know if you have a shattered screen and a dent and keys, you know, then that's kind of what what ends up happening. So just remind me though, usually the freshmen get a new one as they come in and that machine follows the freshmen for those four years. That right? I don't know. Correct? Yeah, that's what we did. Okay. Maybe that's why my son is a senior. End of life. He's got his four years. Yes, yes. He's years. been complaining <laughs> about it the entire time. His <laughs> younger sibling gets a better one. I have one question. So, with the policy change, do we need to post this somewhere for 30 days for comment, or what kind of, what do we need to do? This one um, is one of those policies that we're, we, we adjust and then if the board approves it, it, it becomes in effect. Okay. But, sorry, to go back to the first the first question I had, I really feel like it would be a good thing to just kind of notify parents and say, this is a reminder that your kid can be charged and here's what for. I really think that would be, because I guarantee that every a lot of people were probably like me and just signed the papers and didn't read, which is not a good thing, but that's <laughs> what I did. That's good, that's good <laughs> feedback. I think that's, it would probably be helpful to send out even just a reminder saying, hey, look, this policy was uh, approved, but it's already been in place. It is, it is a, it isn't anything that is... It actually makes it better for parents because there's a lower minimum yeah. now. Yeah. So that's... Thank you for doing your best to take care of your Chromebook. Right, <laughs> yes. exactly. Okay. Okay, okay, any further questions about this policy then? All right, so we're going to be... Uh, that will be brought to our business meeting today. Oh, correct. So. Okay. New middle school questionnaire. Um, Shauna and Caleb. This is you. This is me. Here I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure what I need to be doing. This is the middle school. Okay. It's just a matter of you've got the we might results. Have, we might have a few <coughs> questions for you. Okay, so what have you got? 
I want to know why I was censored. I want to know why I was censored. <laughs> With my survey response, I was omitted from the... Was that, were you being serious? I was being serious. <laughs> I thought you were joking. No, that was actually mine. I wanted to go through the process. And I got censored. <laughs> Good. The Donald Trump, J Donald J. Trump Jr. High, the Oopa Loopas, as the mascot. I got censored. You guys did your job. Congratulations. Good job. That got censored. Okay. Okay. Someone's going to take it out. So this is what I want to propose, is that we narrow this down to three names three mascots and three color suggestions, and then we send it out to the public for them to vote. Oh, I was going to say, let's just do the top ten for color and mascot, and let people pick one or two, and, you know, pick two colors. You only get so to pick two. I feel like they need to stay with as combinations. So, mm -hmm. I think the top three combinations, if you give them individual colors, you could end up with something weird like fuchsia and red together. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs that's to be not in the top, top ten, so that's <laughs> <laughs> No worries. But like purple and like green are like, that would be kind of, I don't would, know. Yeah. So I, I like the idea of narrowing it down to the top three. Um, I think that should be on the board, narrowing it down to the top three um, choices, and then putting that out to the community. I do want to remind the community that in our last meeting we had mentioned that the name Dixon Middle School would remain at the Dixon site, so I would like to take that one off the table. So, so are we just going to discuss what we think? Is it? Yeah. I can, I can give you, you know, input. I, you know, I worry about trouble middle school just because of the initials. Yes. That was the first thing I wanted to comment on. So my first thought when I when I'm thinking of renaming this is let's just call it Provo. I mean that's the easiest thing. But could yeah. we, if we really liked the name Provo, could we call it Provo Junior High? Like why do we have it named Middle School? Is there a junior high? I would I would like to just take Provo out. We have Provo High. We have Provo Peaks. We have Provo. I think we need some variety. I think we've honored Etsy and Provost. In fact, <laughs> I, I, like, I like a lot of the suggestions that have Lake View, Lake Wood, Lake Shore, Lake Tide. But we also have the but lakes. But we so, have yeah. Lake View Elementary, and I feel like as a district, especially such a small district, it just gets it confusing. Gets, yeah, let's, even if there's a similar name. Let's broaden. Yeah, I agree. Same with that. Sunset. Yeah. Sunset feels like we have Sunset, sunset View. Mm -hmm. So that really and in fact, leads I looked, us I with tried to get on Sunset View's website today, and I just typed in sunsetview.provo.org. No, it's sunset.provo.org. Oh, okay. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, can't go with Sunset. So if we're going with the top ten, that only leaves us East Bay. Well, well I, footprinters would be one. And footprinters. I think there are some other good suggestions in the list. Yeah, that I we think. Yeah, at least yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, and not just go awesome. with what. <laughs> I right. kind of on the side. Escalante. <laughs> if we just can have that quarantine, we're going to get confused that we are in Escalante. <laughs> no, I was told that Dry Creek is an actual creek that's just south of what Printer's Park on, which I didn't know. But I don't know if that's a fun name, but that's an actual place near where the school can be. There's one of those already in Utah somewhere. Oh, I Not personally that that like matters. there's another walk up somewhere. East Bay. I like that one. Yeah, but but I East Bay is not. Is that really well? I I think of East Bay and think more off University Avenue. Off University mm -hmm. Avenue, like that sort of mm -hmm. the, the East Bay, the shopping yeah, shopping area. Yeah. 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 But all but I I'm just gonna put out there. I I don't know why, but I just like the name Footprinters. I don't. I, yeah, I, I like that's my that's my top one. It, you like what you printers? know? Yeah, you know it, where it, it is. Location. Mm -hmm. I just I I, oh, you don't I, like dis, it. I dislike oh, I like it. it. Oh, I like it. I like it. I think it's a <laughs> weird name and it does not roll <laughs> off the tongue very well. It's <laughs> personal. Where did the name? I, yeah, where did that name where come from? Is there a history or where does the name like Centennial Middle School come from for Centennial? Was there an actual Centennial? Centennial year of Nineteen ninety-seven. Thank you. Okay. Um, I like. Valley View, and I also like West View as one word, West View. I just feel like we have a lot of views. 
Thank you. That is true. We do. Caleb is listening, so if you have any questions. Hi, Caleb. Hi, Caleb. <laughs> Where was the Provo Bay? Provo Bay Middle School, actually, I thought was cool, too. But it's got Provo on it. True. <coughs> Back to base, but it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, like so, so no Provo, no shoreline. view, no lake, no sunset. It was very shoreline. Utah, Utah Lake. Yeah, yeah shoreline. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's out in that direction. Mm -hmm. so. I like all the Sasquatch stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the Sasquatch. Okay, if, I also, you, if you're really like serious about Oompa Loompas, then we have to. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, I don't know if I can give oh any like. Maybe just for the mascot, <laughs> but we're not to that point. <laughs> I also liked Ridgeline and Parkside. I guess I like compound work, but it is right next to a park. It is Parkside. And we're just trying to pick three, right? Mm -hmm. Pick three. Yeah. I, I just think if we do more than that, it's, yeah. it's yeah, too it's much. Yeah, it's going to get too big. And so footprinters got to be there because there's number two. I think footprinters for sure. I think, I, I'm not a big fan of the promo middle school. No. So I think okay. we can get rid of that one. So we can say footprinters middle school is one. And I think it's footprinter, right? It has an S in this thing. So I, th I but I looked, I looked it up and I think it's just footprinter. They footprinter? call it footprinters park, but footprinter. according to the website, Very it's footprinter. New. I don't. I'm about to look on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know the history behind that name? I tried to find it. You're right. It is just footprinter on the on the map. So Which sound to me sounds better than footprinters. Yeah. I don't know why. But what is that? That what is the history behind that name? There's if it's a cool history, maybe. But I it's can just make a something weird up. name to me. <laughs> They're either gonna love or hate that they can have like feet no all over their. Yeah. Yeah. Probably because it's so muddy out there and just soggy. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I just doesn't inspire. I feel like. Yeah. That's right. This. People are already referring to it as footprinter, so to me it just makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's we already refer to it, but I mean. Well, I think I think footprinter should be one of the three. Okay. That we put out there. Yeah, I agree. Even though I don't want. To. Um, are we still good with having it be with the mask? Are we putting it with like on the survey? Would it say that? Here's your three choices: footprinter, eagles. I think we can make them separate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and I think your mascot can go last, and even in a different survey, if this is the name, choose a mascot. I mean, if you you conclude, I don't no, think that's a good point. There's a way to say also. Yeah. Choose if, a combo. Even though you chose this as your first choice, if your third choice was chosen, what mascot do you feel goes best with that? Like. Yeah. Or, well, we I don't mean, need mascot right now, right? Yeah, I see. We just I, I think. I think. No, we, we, do, we, we do need mascot. mascot. I think. Yeah. I think like your priority is probably colors. <laughs> no, they want because they, they want to be able to put like that mascot throughout the building if possible. Like in the commons, okay. on the wall. And so. Okay. In and some of the it is. outside. All right. So. So we have footprinter. So footprinter. And then what's the second choice? Well, some of us like shoreline. Shoreline, I like shoreline. And I'm then the east, that. are we out on East Bay? Mm, I don't like. I like West, West Bay. Side? No, no. no. I liked Westview, but some of the too many views. Yeah, yeah, if we're trying to get away from repeating, because it feels like that's what we do a lot. I don't mind Utah Lake Middle School. We're out in that direction. But I just foresee I lots of jokes about slime. Yeah, <laughs> I just I love the there, there's there's a reason why there are so many views. There's so many ridge things. Yep. There are there's ridge I mean, line on the because coast. yes cause because it's just a geographic location. What I mean besides I mean it's hard to make fun of a view. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to make fun of. Oh, Timpanogos is just so disgusting you know, from Timpview. Nobody's made fun of that name in forever. Well, that's why you know. footprinter is weird. That's why. Like yeah. 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 Um, but shoreline goes with the same, if your same reasoning with Utah Lake, I mean, shoreline also can be... But it sounds so picturesque. I mean shoreline it's picturesque. picturesque. It, 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 it mm. On the shoreline. But we could be the we don't shoreline think about algae eaters. We don't want to get into the whole Utah Lake thing, because that seems very controversial right now. Yes. 
Did you say Dry Creek Middle School was already middle school somewhere? Um, I, there's a Dry Creek Elementary in... Oh, elementary, but in, not middle school. Yeah, oh. in Alpine. Is it? Mm -hmm. Is anyone else like Ridgeline or Kirkland? I'm not a big fan of Ridgeline. Ridgeline, there's, no, ridge. Ridge line, there's, there's no, ridge. no ridge. Well, you're looking at the beautiful Ridgeline. Well, like, they do have an awesome view up there. They really do. Is Ridgeline a high school in Logan? I guess that doesn't It matter. is something. It's an elementary school in Nebraska. No one suggested oh. Horizon Middle School? What? Horizon? Or horizon? Horizon? <laughs> Why Horizon? It's on the West. It's on the West. Really, I mean, Did you says, want your isn't name? there Horizon right I, I, I didn't get it. Did you make it? Oh. <laughs> McKay was nominated. Someone put McKay's name down. Oh. I know. Nice job. You made it. And Mary Kasusi, too. Uh, I have, a, I have Fort a thing Utah. with people's names, though. This is Fort Utah. Is that on there? Yeah, it's on there. Sorry. I thought that one might be They good. have to already be deceased. So, Esther Peterson cool. is dead. Yeah. I like Fort Utah. Right? I don't know who that is. And that's the thing. I don't think a lot of people know who that person is. Who? There you go. How about Fort Utah? Peterson? What? Fort Utah Middle School. Is that that's Fort a cool school? history. Yeah. Mike. Daughter who's currently in middle school complains their school's a prison. I worry that that would. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a prison, and she left school. I don't know why she even said that. I like Fort I like Fort Utah. What about something with river? It's close to the river. Is it? It is further north. River's more towards like Amelia, isn't it? And uh, a little bit north of Amelia. Parkside. Yeah. Everybody, Jennifer wants Parkside. I, <laughs> I know it's not a bad, it's not a bad suggestion. Or Bayside. 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 Yeah, only if Mr. Belding is there. <laughs> there is a Riverside Middle School, not somewhat Riverside. Riverside. Or Utah that School. Oh, like Utah. Utah. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Riverside <laughs> Drive. Yeah. Doc. Doc. <laughs> yes. Unless nobody remembers that because we're mm -hmm. old enough that no Oh, no, there. that's my favorite movie. Trust I know. Me, I am. I'm on. I got that. My husband thinks it's the perfect movie. It's so. best. It's the best one of all time. <laughs> so we have one, right? We have three down there for Fort Utah. Utah. Yeah, the the line. Well, we haven't officially. We did say Utah. Lane. I'm just writing down ones like we've got. I've written down Footprinter, Shoreline, Parkside, and Fort Utah so far that we're kind of agreeing on. Wait, did you get Utah Lake in there? I went on Utah, Utah Lake. Lake. I that one, but I don't think that's a good one for school. Utah Lake. Yeah. The yeah. colors look to be brown gray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to make I fun think of it's a little too specific. You tell it right now. It's the perfect lake that has no problems. <laughs> <laughs> we're missing a good one. Tsunami Middle School. It's all that. Just in case. Back to uh, Sasquatch. Only if we get the Pegasus. This one says Lakeward Middle School. Interesting. Lakeward. Yeah. I look like that there's Lockwood on here because every time I think it's like Lockwood. <laughs> don't think that was. I don't think that was. With Lakewood on there? There's, there's a lot of lake there. ones, but we already said we didn't want to do another lake, right? Mm -hmm. We have Lake View, and what else do we have? Mm -hmm. that lake has Shore, Lake Side. Oh, you mean lake currently what do we have? Lakewood. Yeah, Surprise like there weren't oh, any only like lake airport one. or aviation. I, I think it would be better if lake was the second word. We have Amelia out there. Yeah. Amelia well, is, is the... That's a, still a, kind of a person, but like sort of... Known for so, aviation. So we have four. Should we just cut, use those four and cut down to three? No, what do we have? Okay, footprinter for sure. And then I have shoreline, parkside, Fort Utah, and lakeshore. Parkside is going to be... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you, Sean. So footprinter shoreline, what else? Fort Utah. Do we want to put them in a fort prison? Yep. <laughs> it's fine. It's I want to be known as FU Middle School. Good that was a good call. Could be a good logo. <laughs> <laughs> the, kids might, the kids might like that. They, <laughs> that. they would love that. But yeah, we can't. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so that brings us down to three, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, we, had, so we said Utah Lake was out. No, Utah Lake. So what's the third one? Footprinter? Shoreline? What else? Yeah, Lake Shore. Lake Shore. Lake Shore. Lake Shore. Oh, Lake Lake Shore. 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 Lake
My brother says it's friendly. My yeah, brother. I know. Okay. Do we have any eagles or hawks or bears in our district? We have eagles. That's one eagles. That's one oh. eagles. Okay. So we should take out the eagles. That moves Sasquatch up. Can you? Can you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the top four. Do we not have any bears Can you anywhere? Can bears? Okay. Where? Can you our bears? Oh, okay. Can you our bears? That moves the bulldogs out. Um, I don't Spring Creek some version of a hawk. Oh, yeah. There's some schools. There Westridge Wildcats and Lakeview. You got, you got Frank I don't know what they do. I should have got Lakeview. Thank you. Thank you. The Lion and the Provost um, Bulldogs. Cougars. We have Hawks, too. Yeah, we do. Sunset View Dragons. Roadrunners. Rock Canyon. Yeah. So, ducks. Well, <laughs> that's impressive. We need to include panthers because that was yeah. there. Yeah, I think panthers should carry that down. back over. For sure. Got something from old school. You can, from you can see they've done birds of prey if you feed into Tempview, and they've done the cat family. If you, cats or bear or animals if you go to Sobelheim. Do we have any ducks? Yeah. Yeah. I do like ducks. The ducks? No, I mean in oh, the district. Yeah. 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 Okay. So panther, <laughs> are we yes or no on eagles? I think yes or no on eagles. No on eagles. No on eagles. Get to the Sasquatch. Okay. <laughs> yes or no on hawks. Do we have any hawks? Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We have hawks. Well, then I say no. I say okay. no. Okay. And we have bears. Bears. Yeah. We have we have bears already. All right. That's we don't have any bigfoot. <laughs> I think we should put it on there. Yes. Yeah. 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 Let people know. <laughs> And the, and the ducks. ducks. I think we put ducks. So, Panther, yeah. Sasquatch, yeah. ducks. I mean, if we and added the dry creek, ducks would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. Phoenix, you go beyond. Florida, yeah. the, the Phoenix, the gulls, are, and the horses are all kind of together. Yeah. I don't know. Thunderbird eventually like is going to get me too, or Culture whatever Mustang. it is when you get canceled. Yeah, the but non, you know, Phoenix floors. Although, I was at Sunset View and the kids really liked the idea of Phoenix because of Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh, okay. They Put really Phoenix in there. Phoenix. But, okay. that, that, but that's also an elementary school kid view. And, and this is middle schoolers. So I wonder if it would mean as much Do they like Harry Potter? It was a big Apple? controversy at kids. <laughs> what? The Phoenix? The Phoenixes. Yeah. Was controversial? It was. Well, what about, but what? what about some kind of culture? It has a I close association. Because seagulls is kind of the, the plural. Yeah, of I like culture mustangs. Culture mustangs. There you go. We should do one. Culture mustangs. Okay. Yeah. 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 Choice, which do you guys have a preference on? Plural of Phoenix. Say that again. Phoenix? Plural of Phoenix. Is it Phoenix? I don't know. It has some that's on Phoenix. Be nice. Yeah, we're gonna move. It didn't work well for farming. Okay, yeah, that doesn't work. So the top four <laughs> I don't know, panthers. But they kept it. Sasquatch, <laughs> ducks, and colts slash broncos. Wait, what about mustangs? Mustangs, or mustangs. Mustangs. Should we just have a hand raised vote if we like colts, mustangs, or broncos? Yes. Yeah. Maybe we should maybe we should put that on there. They, they, then if it's then we can make it rhyme. No, not, not rhyme, but the other one. Depending on what, oh, yeah. what the other one is, what sounds better with whatever. Why don't you do a slash and then you can choose from it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea with the slash. <laughs> Colts, Mustang, Broncos. Ducks might be good. That's why we have ducks. We have ducks. Yeah, that'll make you real happy. <laughs> Okay, we've got four for that. Panther, Sasquatch, Duck, Colt, Slash, Bronco, Slash, bron uh, Bronco, Slash, Mustang. Are you really saying we have to Okay. Colt, Slash? Yeah, take out the Bronco. We don't want to be in like... Are, are you prepared to accept Sasquatch? Because that's an outlier that people will vote for because it's an outlier. It is an outlier. What is an outlier? Are we willing to accept Sasquatch? Sasquatch. Natives. People will vote for it just... This is so cool. If your mascot was Sasquatch, that would be so cool. Is there anything controversial about it? No, he's yeah. just friendly. He just goes around. Well, just don't call it Not exactly the vision of, <laughs> like, <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> 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 well, for a Sasquatch, also good. But that is a good question, because if they're going to pick it, then we need to be willing to. Is Sasquatch. I'll look if Sasquatch is offensive while you guys figure out the colors. Well, all right, let's go to colors. No offensive to the okay. caveman. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so it looks oh, like yeah. yellow-blue gets the top pick for that one. Yeah. Blue, green, is that a strange combo? No, no it's, it's like no. watercolors. We do have that. That's true. Plus it depends on the shades of blue that you choose. Yeah. 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 
Seahawks. Seahawks and Mariners. Okay. Silver and Mariners. And then it looks like blue white. So is that like BYU? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Can we do like blue silver? I'm just also trying to think. We're gonna put whatever the colors are into the design of the school. What's gonna also? What would be an accent color? Yes. We always get white anyway. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe blue and silver. I like that. Um, I don't think black and yellow is gonna look good. I, I love black, black and yellow. If you're black and yellow, you got to be the beast. Yes, right? I know. that's yeah. why I just Although, up in Bergen City, they're purple, so... Is it the Wasatch beast. High School black and yellow? Yeah. Yeah, they're the Wasatch. Yeah, Wasatch. Yeah. 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 So that works. See, so that works. Right. Black and yellow seems funny unless it goes with the mascot. I agree. But then green and white is probably the highest colors. And yeah, we but yellow is yeah. also a, the duck color. What is duck color? Oregon duck. Oregon oh. Oregon. <laughs> If we do green, green I'd, I'd want to do like green and gray rather than. I know. I think we should avoid green because they get to have green for four years of purple. Yeah, I agree with that. It's okay. I had blue from fair all the way to all graduate way school. So my You're all wardrobe was blue. Technically, <laughs> blue is not one of Tintu's colors. It's not? It's white and orange. My wife is very serious about this. <laughs> Should have petitioned to change the colors on me. Well, Lose the accent color. I do say, I, I, mean, I do say we take it out green. I, she said orange and white. Yeah, I think blue. And, and are we taking out black and yellow? But they want blue and white. Yeah, we'll since we didn't pick the... Any kind of mascot that would go with it, I think black and yellow is a strange. Yeah, yeah something um, that goes with it. Yep. So that leaves yellow, us yellow, blue, 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 green. Blue, gold. Red gold? Isn't that Red yellow blue? blue? Wait, yellow blue, blue green. Are we doing blue and white? We said no on a white one. We no. said blue. We could could do blue, blue silver. silver, like a navy silver. This is do we need to do? Yeah, do we need to specify? <laughs> do we need to specify which kind yeah. of blue? Because technically, right now they're navy and yellow. No, I think we should leave it open, and then we can decide. Then we can, okay, but. Okay. And I'd also like to suggest that Shauna is exceptionally gifted with the visual things and colors in particular, so mm -hmm. we need to have her be part of this to sort it out once we... Are done. you going to put them in Are the survey? Are there any on there in the top ten that you would say no right now? Um, color. I, I can tell you them. Yellow, blue, blue, green, blue, white, black, yellow, green, white, Red, black, blue, gold, purple, yellow, green, yellow, and blue, black. There's no green. What? What the color is not You would not do? Daddy, thank you. That's what we're going to do. We need to get in there somewhere. It would be the bottom two of the tree because both of those are the same. Nobody chose brown. Yeah, there's brown down there further. Is there an educational color that's yellow black for encouraging it? Yeah. Okay, take out the yellow black you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I saw a study one time that a gentle pink is very Oh, pink's not on here. Red and yellow means food. All colors like both. Not Pepto the, um, the purple and yellow if you ended up with a soft watch would be really weird. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the hardest yeah. combination. I mean, if you get a Sasquatch, then... And you're going to do... A, you're going to end up with a soft watch because that's what everyone's going to vote on because it's different. And so, I don't know. Sasquatch should be brown. <laughs> there. You don't want to put Do I need to put an addendum in here saying a Sasquatch is chosen, it's just automatically brown and something? <laughs> we don't well, have to well even if the public know. chooses, it, we don't have to, right? We don't have to what? We're not bound by the public we choice. We can also right? ask them for their first choice, their second choice. Like, we should rank maybe rank not ask them their only choice, right? Yeah. Rank choice voting? They rank, rank choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rank choice. I, I, I agree about the best watch. I, I mean, it's really fun, especially if it was foot printer. Right. You could do something fun with that, but... Well, that's what I'm saying. We, we shouldn't be... If we're, if we're not bound, if, if Footprinter wins, then it makes sense for Sasquatch. But if Footprinter doesn't win, what? then 
it doesn't make sense. So we can have, we have flexibility on what we choose, even if they vote a bunch of stuff that doesn't go together, right? Yes. Like if you got ended up at the lakeside dark green and yellow, or green and white, or whatever you do. No, because I have an idea. Todd, he get, Todd gets too much joy from it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. 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 Leave the color alone. And just, um, what, what uh, once we've got the other two, we'll give it to Sean and Saul. Okay, I saw I think that's a good idea. So we'll just do mascot and name on the survey? Are we still good with Sasquatch? Yeah. Can't getting yes, yes, McKay, Sasquatch? I mean, it's going to win. It, it will win. That's why I'm just saying, are we are we okay as a board? <laughs> Parents are going to vote. They're going to be very reasonable. <laughs> I mean, they put Panthers. Panthers got what? How many votes? 137. Sasquatch only got 15. Yeah, but these were nominations. This was not the topic. Yeah, this is yeah. given the idea of a I wonder if we can do a survey in a way that says, okay, rank your... You know, choices for the name of the school. And as far as mascots go, if the school is named number one, which mascot do you feel is best with that school? If it's named number two, which mascot goes best with that? Because that might, we might get different answers for different schools. Some people might choose, choose the same mascot no matter, but some might say, you know, I feel like this. So, so here's maybe what we should do is, okay, what's your favorite school? Now, which mascot goes best with which school? Mm -hmm. And then school whatever you chose. school wins, we we'll take the, the mascot that they that everyone most people felt went with that school. I just feel like you guys are trying to sabotage Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Look, have you read have you read Devolution? Devolution? Yes, it's a popular book right now and I read it recently and the the Bigfoot in those in that book are horrendously mean and awful creatures. Well, they're misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> they're misunderstood. You know, from uh, personal experience. <laughs> they're gentle creatures. You don't have people attack. They don't attack people, do they? There's been no they are gentle. And some author is maligning them. And I take offense at that author. Oh, my God. Which got you? Oh, my for cultural references, there's the Native American um, meanings behind it, and I don't... Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. I, I feel I it. did read about it. That's it seems like <laughs> they called it, that was a word for a hairy man. Native American word for hairy man. So do we want the mascot for a junior high to be hairy man? Hairy man. <laughs> <laughs> All hairy man. I don't know. I just want to know what the people want. Okay. Do the people want Stop a hairy you man? Know, but you know, as soon as they see that, they're going to go, yes, I'm voting for that. Let, let, well, let Caleb and I do a little research on the okay. before we put it on. Okay. So, shall we pick one more in case we take that spot off? Yeah. The Yeti. The Yeti. Caveman. <laughs> We, we could just do you Bigfoot, because hey, that has no wait, cultural can I put a plug in for raptors? Yes. Raptor, there's or no dinosaurs else? in oh, our district, yeah, there and are dinosaurs are all over Utah. Like, raptors make oh. so much Utah sense. Utah raptors. Okay. Okay. Is it on the list? Yes, what Utah about raptor. Oh, right? a number 11. Raptor the one right after our country. It's the one right, it's number 11. I know. Yeah. Okay. And there's no dinosaurs in our district. I like raptors. Okay. Raptors is the alternative. No, I guess. Okay. Okay. I like okay. <laughs> and did you guys, how are you um, doing Colt Broncos or Mustangs? Which one is All three. No, it's just Colt Mustang because they don't like Mustang. And then we can like decide that. Based on. Okay. Okay. Denver for her. So. You hate Denver? You hate the city of Denver, Jennifer? <gasps> <laughs> no! They just are not Denver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Jennifer and I just want to clarify. So we're doing Footprinter, Shoreline, Horizon, and Dry Creek as our four. And then Panthers, Duck, Colt, Slash Mustang, 
and rafters. We're taking Sasquatch off. Are we taking it off or are we I think we should take it off. I think it's just too oh. crazy. It's too much of a And outline. it's a hard plural. You, you had your laugh. It's You're a hard plural. It, it, You're just bitter about the Oompa Loompas. No, no, that actually was a joke. But I think kids okay. would love to be the Sasquatches. I'm sure they would, but uh, no. okay, fine, fine. And then we will we will defer to Shauna when they get the results in on what good color choices might be. So, does that work for everybody? Okay. No pressure. Is there any other further discussion on? Dismissed school names. Okay, that was probably one of the funnest things that we've had to discuss in a long time. <laughs> so, all right, calendar discussion. I'm going to start with uh, superintendent. Okay, that was fun. Um, so there's two items. Um, why don't we start with the second one first? Jason, you want to talk about the um, the issue around fall break? You bet. Uh, so we meet each year, as we've discussed in the past, with the um, K-16 Alliance meeting. This year, they had we'd given them some options over where our fall break would be, and they, the university side, had requested we do the later uh, fall break. Uh, the other two local districts had had the earlier fall break on their calendar, and they said they would go back and kind of discuss it, see whether or not they would be wanting to make a change. We've recently heard that they have decided they're not changing theirs, so we would like to align with them. Uh, in aligning our fall break with them, just to some of the conversations we've had about the number of days for the term, those kinds of things to not make things difficult, we'd move the end of the term back to the 12th of October, which would make the first term a 41-day term. And then this term also ends before winter break. So it makes the second term 42 days. And the second half of the year is, has longer terms, but they're pretty equalized. And so talking to the secondary schools, as long as they're equal on either half of the year, more equal, then they felt very <laughs> comfortable with it. So any, any questions about that? Or Do we have to adopt that? Or uh, I think you can, it, it is a currently a, approved. In the past, we've just taken your suggestion and moved it, but we can make a motion if you like. I don't know if we, if need, we don't to. need to. Then. We don't need to. I would just suggest that if we make this change, that we get this out to the public ASAP so they're aware of it. Yeah, and I have it already ready to go. We just wanted to have the conversation tonight, and then we can post it. I've had emails from parents worried about Playoffs. I have to. With sports. Yeah. And in the past, not necessarily with just the playoffs, but other sporting events around fall break, teams have had to work together to potentially move back in the week or those kinds of things. And so, like you're saying, I think this helps us because it doesn't cause a playoff type situation where we're, those games are harder to move. I think this helps us just in that our employees will be aligned with when their kids are out. If they live in another school district but work here, they won't have that kind of conflict. So there's a lot of reasons to align the fall break. Looking around for conditions this is housing in, in breaking the alignment with the universities. I, I think the universities, <coughs> to be honest, they're, they're okay with it. I think they wanted it because it, it was closer aligned with some of their term end dates. And so that was their reasoning for the request. Um, but I, I don't think they'd be overly opposed with it. In the past, where it had been kind of a UEA professional development type weekend, people st stayed closer and truer to that. But now, um, a lot of districts have moved them forward and back just to try to meet their calendar. I mean, it's not so much about the professional development that's offered in the state. So. I agree. We need to align with our neighboring district for a lot of reasons. Um, I would just say it'd be great to not only post it on our website, but then to send a proactive email communication because a lot of parents are already scheduling things for their fall break and need to have the right weekend. And then also I noticed on the website when you go to calendars, it still lists the past two calendar years that we're done with. If we could Is there a reason why we keep those on there? 
We usually keep only the one. We haven't mm -hmm. updated and taken the second yeah. one off. It'd we usually great, leave one last, the last year, just for reference if people are looking at timings. Okay. So we'll remove remove one of the okay. past, yeah. yep, and get this one updated. And I agree with you. I'll work with Sean and Caleb to make sure not only do we get it changed on the website, but that we send something out to the parents, to the community, everyone, so that they know that we have made a change. What's that? I made a note of it. Perfect. Okay. You want to talk about the second thing? Or do you want me to? Yeah, you go ahead. Okay, the second thing was is, um, we discussed with uh, Lindsay Dockus <laughs> of PEA how what we could do to help with the teachers coming up in March. And so we, Rebecca and I spoke with her directly um, and what we would like to do is so on the March 4th and March 25th, those are early out days. During that time, we would go away with PLCs for them, and it would be teacher-directed time, meaning they wouldn't have meetings or anything like that, but that would give them time to do what they need to do during that time. And then the other one was on October 8th, or not October, March 18th. Um, we would set aside that afternoon for grading specifically because it's the end of the term. This way it doesn't inter uh, interfere with students. They're still in school the exact amount of time, but gives extra time for teachers. And so add anything? Yeah, normally that's what it is designated PLC time for the teachers. But instead of having it, so what we do is we take away the requirement to meet in PLCs or other things that school schedule or whatnot, and we just let it be completely teacher directed. So whatever they need to do, whatever they see fit, is how they can use their time. So of course we'll ask them to use the time wisely and whatnot, but but they can if they need to catch up on grading, that's what they do. If they need to catch up students on you know tests, that's what they do, and they can kind of have a little bit more flexibility there. So March 4th would give them just before the end of the term, and then March 25th would give them the beginning of the new term to give them some extra time. So they are those two days are already no students are in school. It's after so it's it's already early out. It's a Friday. Okay. During the early. So it's during that time once the kids have left school. Okay. okay. And then, so, so yeah. there's no in disruption to students okay. during this time. And then, but there will be a de different designation for the 18th, which is a grading only day. So the 4th and the 25th are teacher directed time, the 18th would be designated as a grading Because the 18th only. is the last day of um, the term, and that way they have extra time to get grades in. Okay. You guys have any questions about that or thoughts? And that's for this year. Just for this year. This is just to help them out right now. Thank you for working through the way to help out with the Super okay. creative. So, okay. So the 18th is already an early out day? Right. Correct. So they, so all, they all fall on a Friday when they all fall on Friday. Out early it does anyways. not disrupt students, which is one of the better parts of this, too. Okay. Um, <coughs> have we talked, have they talked about because we always talk about how March is the stretch where it's so hard for teachers. Have we, mm -hmm. have they talked or given any suggestions on as to how we that can break that up on a permanent basis? Yeah, that's something that we can discuss coming up in the future. Okay. So, but for right now, it's just too difficult with the timing. Okay. So. So, Gina, I think what's going to happen with that is uh, uh, I've got to be with Jason in particular on this, but this will probably be. A, a kind of a related conversation during bargaining, and um, then I'll, we'll we'll work through this, and then we'll bring something back to you not later in the June business meeting, so that if there are decisions and discussions that have to occur, we can get that done and then get it out regarding the calendar <coughs> next year. That's usually, by the way, when the board approves the, the renegotiate contract with PEA anyway, so it lines up very nicely. I just said, yeah, I just. I think we need a permanent solution to yeah. this. <laughs> or semi permanent. Okay, is there any further questions about the calendar calendaring items? All right, the next fun one, redistricting. Alright, where I want to start with this is um, I asked each of you to bring your top five. And maybe what we can do is we can each list those top five and see if there's any overlay to go from there. Uh, you know, have a map yeah, I told her to get show? to it. Okay. So. 
Because that might be easier for people to see. And if I never look at a redistricting map again, I will. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. My notes and the good thing is that this decision has a time limit. It's a 10 year decision. And, and it, if they don't like it, they can change it in 10 years. Yes, <laughs> but it's also a 10 year decision. Can so. I start by saying thank you to Karen and the city for I do appreciate the metrics that were used that did help us narrow down when sorting through 105 maps that we could easily weed some out very quickly. So I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. And Phil, you only sort of make your the map. I had a lot of emails back and forth with him making sure we could put the school location on there. He did a good job with that. Yeah. Our GIS team is fantastic. <laughs> All right. And I want to thank Terry for <laughs> really harassing me when I was in San Francisco to think about this thing and emailing me nonstop. So, thank you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so are you guys okay if we just go ahead and say the top five of each of ours and then see if there's one that maybe there's seven of us had that same one? Yeah, or okay. okay. So um, I'll start. Better balance. Better balance. Better balance. Better balance. Uh, do we all want to just raise our hand? Yes. Okay, that one's good. So we had six on that one. Can you show that on so people can see? It's called Better Balance. No, that's it. not it. There it is. No, that's not it. These are the, I think these are the, that's the council. Dis council. Yeah, council one. yeah, that's council. Oh, okay. yeah. So you gotta go up, and then on the right hand side, there's us. Yeah, school these, these there school go. board plans at the top. A little higher. Sorry. She has to do it for <laughs> Not create, just view. Okay, but she can still see it from here. Then scroll down and go to view plans. Why were so many people more concerned about the school board district than the cities? We just started the city. Oh, okay. yeah, they're not. Because they just voted on whether they were going to go to a five, two, six, one, or a seven. Because it was really annoying to have 104. This was a lot. So this is this is better balance. Okay. Number two, I had new district plans. I had that one. I I had that one. There's four on that one. Uh, then I had redistricting uh, 11722. And then, uh, what? Uh, how many voted for redistricting? The 11722. Yeah, the 11722. Four. Okay. And then uh, I also had balanced school board. I have that one. This one was a little different for me because actually Rock Canyon and um, Rock Canyon and uh, Centennial are actually in that little L shape. But what's really strange about that precinct is that the bottom half, just the little L, part, the bottom part of the L, is the, uh, Rock Canyon, and everything north of that in the top part of the L is Edgemont. So it's hard That's to That's a really nice way to say L. <laughs> I was going to describe it another way, but no, it's an L shape. What were you going to describe that? Yeah. You don't want to know. A high heel shoe? Which, and no. We chatted about that, Melanie, and I liked that. I thought that was a, a good point. Yeah. So, uh, and so there were two on that one? Two. Two? Okay. And then my fifth was Balance for Dixon, but it's not my favorite. Yeah, I like that one. So, yeah. we had no, three, one, two, I'm three. I brought like so eight. four on that. Yeah, so I, have, I have ten. So <laughs> I'm good with ten. I have my like that. Okay, let's go through others. How about? Um, I'll tell you that was really hard to go from 105 down to five. Yeah. The one distributed schools. Oh, I really like that one. Yeah. Okay. I thought that one was good. I think that was my number six. So. 
So how many voted for that? That was my top five. Well, that was my number six. I don't know. Can I tell That's you why I, I really I like this one? I'm going to point out something. So these three right here don't have any schools in them. And since they're right next to the huge, gigantic BYU, that there's no schools in any of these. So I like this one because, if Bonnie, if you could go to the high school boundaries, this goes along with the high school boundaries, which... Uh, these three were hard to fix. Like, do they want to be with the west side? Do they want to go north side? And it, this one goes yeah, that, to Provo that, High. That one flips over all that time, that little horn. Yeah. This, and it is a normal neighborhood. And then it seems weird to have this precinct over this way, but it goes along with the high school boundaries. So that's why I really liked this map. So how many were for this one? I did. There was four of us, right? Was it, is this distributed schools? Yeah. Yeah, this was my number okay, one. That was my fifth. Okay. That's the only reason why I really liked this one. I, the the only thing I don't like is that that top blue part is a lot of Wasatch, which then becomes part of my area. Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. like it's got too many little... It's not quite as compact as the other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of weird shape is what I feel. You know, the weird so boundaries precinct boundaries that All right. made. Rebecca? I'm, I, that's mostly the ones I liked. Uh, most of mine have been good. Yeah. Okay. Jennifer? Um, so we've already got three of mine. I also liked Provo 2022. I really like that one. Yeah, me too. That was my second favorite. Yeah, number three. Can we bring that one up? Can we look at that one? Um, yeah, right there. This was like the OG, right? Is it? It's pretty one? close. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it because it Melanie kills me in it. And no, so I don't kill you in that. Don't you? Don't you no. live in that? Oh, I, set? you are. Yeah, yeah, we are in the same one. Yeah. But then I, yeah, what I don't like about it. What I worry about is there's not a lot of representation for Rock Canyon yeah. in that because it's mostly BYU. Oh, and that's actually what I wrote is this too heavy on the BYU area. Because that so. is mostly BYU. There, in that bottom, that big blob in the center of the blue is mostly B, is like almost all BYU. Yep. And then, like I said, the top part of the L, that's all Edgemont. That's all Edgemont. Okay. And then... Um, then never mind, I don't like this much anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that huge BYU precinct. It, 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 it throws really yeah. of everything, yeah. everything so off. It um, makes it hard. I also liked Provo Rocks. Um, I like that one. I think some people aren't going to like it because it puts Edgemont and Tempe in the same um, school board member district at Centennial Rock Canyon, but it's really close to the boundary, and I don't think that's a big deal to just assign the district one person to at least one, if not both, of those schools. Like, that's a decision you need to make. It doesn't matter. Like, the residents are in district one anyway, so we can assign how The we one thing to. I don't like is, like, the precinct where Nate lives. Not that I'm saying uh, that's that, again. that one, but he takes in a, that little lower part, boy, the big BYU blob center thing, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going down, down, left, left. It's Where the red, red is. Yeah, right there. Th those are, there's just a small part right there, and those kids go to Rock Canyon. Well, that's why it was my number five, and not my number and then, five. And, <laughs> and the same, these go to Tempe, you know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. At the yeah. same, I mean, I. I Perfect on any Nothing is perfect, no. and I understand part of those balance. But once elected, we are supposed to represent every, every student. Every yeah. Exactly. I, mean, I, I don't care as much about some of those school so boundaries. So the boundaries. Yeah. So who else liked this map? I it was on there. Okay, I like Provo Rocks. Rocks. Is it? Yeah. So three with Provo Rocks. I think there's three. Three. Jennifer. Yes, on that one. Yeah, I was going. Out of my top five, we said all. Okay, Gina. I liked NW too. I like that one too. Me too. Um, it's but it's also very similar to. Uh, I've looked wow. at so many freaking maps. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's I very know. similar to I think one of the other uh, ones we already picked. Um, but yeah, I yeah, like that one. Yeah, distributed school. Gina, very close. Very close to what do you like school. about it? Um, I like that it. So I know that there's some people who live on the west like in that little triangle that goes to Tempview, but lives on the west. 
Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. I know that they feel like they would like to be more represented with, they, they feel like they would be better represented in the West than with a, a, a board member on the East side. And so that's one of the reasons why I like that one. Um, and then, I mean, it kept, I, I don't really care. I mean, I care if we're in the same district, but I think it needs to be more based on, but, but we do, I think this keeps most of us in our districts. But so that should be. My only biggest thing, and I'm looking at Rock Canyon, no, Rock Canyon's the L, and it's yep. now Nate, or it's District 1. Yeah. And then, so we would switch, and so most of Rock Canyon would be represented at the Edgemont. There's not. Again, we can assign how we want to. So that's right? the other thing. Is we we've been doing it based on, yeah. like, our area. So. Oh, and then on this one, McKay, <coughs> or where's the new Wasatch on this? It's no, in it's, it's in, in blue. Yeah, yeah, it's in blue. It's in you blue. Put, Bonnie, would you mind putting up the school? The little school. They didn't put the new one. They didn't put the new one. No, 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 but it'll give but us, it gives us a good idea. Yeah. So if you put school in points. school points, school point, point, the, the last one. Yeah. Yep. Do you want me to take off the high school one? No, no it doesn't it. matter. So that will put me in this one, too. Uh -huh. So, so it and, doesn't matter. And another thing to not think as, about, and again, I don't bigger. think it should matter where, I mean, we need to do what's so best for the city, not what's best for the oh, city. I agree. But, but, to look for but we're going to, my district, whatever my central, the brown district is, we're going to only have one school, which I think is interesting. We've got like, we're the, for me, I think we're like the smallest, we're the most compact district, which means we have a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. By the time Dixon moves, we will only have one school. And yeah. I think that that and that's, tells a story. That's in everyone except for balance uh, for Dixon. Balance for Dixon. Right? It gives you two. Yeah. And yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I picked that. The, the balance for Dixon one I thought was interesting because it could flip the control of the school board from Provo High to uh, Tinview. Like if you had, if which you would had be kind of, if you had someone run in that spot. I thought that was kind of interesting. What do you mean? I don't understand. Yeah. Like, Can we look at that one? Wait, first of all, how one? many are, are in favor of NW2? Two? Two. So go to bal balance <laughs> for... Uh, for Dixon. I just thought this one was interesting. I don't know if it's the best because it has some issues, but uh, that purple spot in Franklin, that one, you know, that could conceivably be someone who runs for the school board and and, oh, and right. they they could flip. They take the seven. Yeah, they'd be near yeah. Franklin and they would it would flip the number from uh, where Provo High gets four mm -hmm. and Tinju gets three, which might be interesting. And I'll and I'll tell you, there is a lot of angst from my district as well, I hear from people from the west as well, that the east bench has four, <coughs> and yeah. that's been that way forever. They have four seats, and it's not that we should be enemies, but the, the needs of the east bench and the needs of the south and the west are are often different. Mm -hmm. And so what's, I, I got an email just as I was coming here from, from one of my constituents who was like, I, we, we need some, <laughs> we need some more representation on the school board. So and this one also gives two schools for the south. Yeah. I can understand that concern, and I definitely feel everybody needs representation. But if I'm just looking at this map, there is more population on the east half because it goes further north. So yeah, the shape. It yeah, just makes I mean, that's, blend that's why. And you have the population of BYU mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, Gina. Uh, Gina, I'm just curious out of all the maps, what I mean, what kind of configuration do you feel works best for your district, your neighborhood? Like, because I feel like I understand some of the other parts of the town better as to, you know, some some maps on, for some districts really cut them up funny or something. Or do most of these work well for your neighborhood? It feels uh, like cohesive. Well, to be perfectly honest, we don't have many schools left in our neighborhood, so it's not like it. I mean. Once Dixon moves, this is the only map that keeps one in my district, right, two in my district. Once Dixon moves, we will have only Timpanogos. That's the only one we'll have. And so as far as, and I, I, I am not as concerned, uh, and maybe I should be, maybe I'm new and so I don't understand, but I'm not as concerned about, I represent some folks that, that go up to Westridge and I'm fine with that. I, I'm happy to represent them as well. So maybe I should be more concerned about that, so I, I don't know. Maybe Terry might be better. No, I... Uh, for me, it's not much about like the schools, although that's important. But like, so on this one where the river is, Rebecca's district has 
an area precinct below the river. Do you, right. Does that feel more cohesive with the neighborhood that's closer to Timpanogos, or does that feel more cohesive with the neighborhood? Like, right. you know, does that matter? Am I asking too hard? That's, that would be 500 north, that line that's between the brown and the... Yeah, the, so I'm talking just line. north of that. But like that curvy so A lot of maps give you that that's area of north of 500 I would north. say that that would be more me. That would be more people that, that would be alike in my district. Okay. It, do you think... Uh, there was a lot of people who were talking about, and, and maybe Travis called you, about just a west side district. To me, it seems like if you want to have... If you want your neighbor to neighborhood to be represented, uh, it's... I think McKay is able to represent Wasatch a lot better right now because he has one school uh, really in his area. I mean, you'll have Tippetoes, you'll be that neighborhood's representative. Whereas if you had a whole West Side uh, rep where they are representing everything west of, uh, it just seems like it dilutes it. No, you know, I, so would, much. I would. I would. I, 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 I don't I live on the, the West Side, but the West Side ones. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I don't. I, 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 I've had the same thought. Like you have. Here you have two, at least two, maybe three, if you count the brown, who, who are have interest in the West, whereas mm -hmm. if you put everything in one, and this is just my, I don't live on the West Side, but if you have them all one, then that means they only have one board member and one person who's representing them. So I prefer that they have like so more, more something more like this or one the other one. And by West Side, when we say that, we're defining that everything west of Geneva, Correct. right? Yeah. West of yeah. Geneva, yeah. I-15. I-15, yeah. really. Okay. Yeah. So I, I want to point out the map redistricting one seventeen twenty two. Can you go to that one? <coughs> All three districts. Yeah, right. Yeah. right there. This is why the people on the west side don't like maps like this. Because of that bottom precinct. Yes, that is a weird one. A they weird one. Between so right now the city council map looks like this and these people absolutely hate it because yeah. no one from their precinct ever gets elected so they never feel like they're ever represented it's always east side east side east side but so a map like this but couldn't they be elected mm -hmm. and then they would have they would have four where they would be but no one ever gets elected from that well, side because of where numbers. the population is. Yeah, so it's, yeah. That's it's the one thing I don't one. like about that map is I feel, again, it's taking okay. one little neighborhood yeah. and chunking it into a different yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. And it's not even about east and west, it's just about, yeah, where one, is the neighborhood? It should go with the neighborhood yeah. near it. Yeah. That's why this, you know, okay. this map isn't good. Because okay. of just so that let's one. Let's keep going. <laughs> so, Gina, did you have more? Those were my main ones. The, I think the one I like the best for the west. Well, we're not going to do west side, so no. That's the. I think so. Can you read to me which ones we have? You want to read them off, Keith? That you can write down. Well, I'm not sure. Okay. I got two from Gina. I got one. Better no, just balance. all together. I'm. I'm wondering what we have. So I've got okay. better balance. Better balance. Okay. New district plan. Redistricting one seventeen twenty two. Um, balanced school board. Balanced for Dixon, distributed schools, Provo 2022 School Board, Provo Rocks, and NW2 are the ones that I have. Okay. I, I think. Do you want you want votes next to those as well? Yes. Can we know how? There okay, I'll start at the top again. Their balance is six. New district plan is four. Redistricting 11722 is four. Uh, balanced school board is two. Balanced for Dixon is four. Distributed schools is four. Um, Provo 2022 school board. I didn't get a count on that one. It was four. Was it four? Okay. Um, Provo P Provo Rocks. I'm sorry. Is three. And oh. NW2 is two. I think you got m my main one covered. Right. McKay? No, I'm good. No problem. You're good with all what we've suggested? Yeah. yeah, everything's been mentioned. I'm good with all those. Okay, Terry? I, I have all those. My very favorite, though, is uh, go to the map. This is perfect. This is perfect? Yes, that's what it's titled. <laughs> so, map. Go to M. Map dash, this is perfect. Yeah, M. 
It's the very first one titled map. You gotta have a lot of confidence if you're titling it that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. This one was my favorite, but it will never get picked. <laughs> well, that's that the west sign. Yeah. That's because the people from the west side tell me this is what they want. So I. The I've also had people in my district tell me they like this. The one. problem this is Edgemont, Canyon Crest, Rock Canyon, and Wasatch all in the same uh, district split. Yeah, it doesn't represent the schools well. And the west side, it's poor schools there. It also, that little bottom in the blue, it should, for neighborhood wise, it feels more cohesive with what's like yellow, so yeah. that feels kind of. Yeah. It's only school would be Franklin, that little blue one at the bottom. Yeah. So, what's the name of this one again? Map. This is perfect. Yeah. perfect. And I think there's how many here voting I for this one? Just yeah. me, probably. <laughs> I'll put. I have one left. I'll, I'll do one. Because that's what my constituents have told me. Okay. So. They, is this the only map that has a whole left left side one? My yeah. favorite west yeah. side yeah. would map school focused. If we're doing west side one, but. I'm not a fan of them. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I've got two for the one that's up on the screen. Right now. Yep. So, okay, does so it look like Better Balance has the Better most? Balance has the most. So, and then it looks like we could give them four or, did we have really I could, I could go with, one, I didn't two, vote three, for New District four. Plan, but I, now that I look at it, Can I would be fine with that. Can you pull up two twenty twenty two and You have a five-way tie for second. That's why I just want to make sure with Provo 2022 that we, that was one that everybody. I just took with. that one out. Oh, yeah, she took that one out. So if everyone's okay yeah, taking that, because that was the one that was really heavy on what's now Melanie's area, yeah, would go mostly, mostly BYU. BYU. So um, and I hadn't voted for the new district it. plan, but I now looking at it, I would be fine with that one. So, so she's got a five there. Well, I, it looks like we could send four to the mm -hmm. city council. Better balance, new district. Um, Redistricting 11722 and balance for Dixon. It's distributed schools. Distributed schools. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, distributed schools. So we could send those five. Great. Is that okay if we send those five to them? Can we narrow it down? Did they ask for three? How many do they want? Can I? It's whatever number. I mean, we just yeah, I mean, whatever. I, mean I, I, I honestly would be okay with any of those five. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah, and we picked, I mean, we said. But was it better balance? Like almost all of us. Almost all of us picked better balance. So that's um, the so, so that's the top choice. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's send those five on to the to the council. And and should we tell them how them? we rank um, them? I I took notes, and I'll probably watch the video to get <laughs> some of the nuances. So if we challenge you to have um, critiques on the specific map, please send it to the council member. <laughs> so wait, are we going to do an official like write up or something? Or? Uh, we do need to do a motion on this and so we need to I just need to make sure that we have the actual names. Can of you say the names again? Yeah. So, so better balance. And let's better balance them in rank order too. <laughs> number one. Better, better balance is number one. Number two would be new district plans, is that right? Yes. Well the rest of them all have four. So who knows which which one is and then then a the rest the are big the third place third. tie. There's a third place tie for three of them. Which would be which was uh, redistricting 11722, uh, balance for Dixon, and distributed schools. And so what we'll do is we can just we'll say in our business meeting when we make the motion on that I'll read off or whoever can read off those five names. Okay. All right, that went faster than I thought it would be. So it was faster than the school math class. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Wait, I have a question. Sorry. Okay, should we go back to it for a second? Yeah. Okay, so as we're looking at our three-way tie, and based on the discussion we just had, so the redistricting 117.22 has that funny little area of that neighborhood that it is closer over by the Franklin neighborhood, but it's grouped with Okay. The southeast. Do we want to That's take it which, off the which table one is because it? of that? I suggest redistricting one seventeen twenty two. Tara hates this one. Yeah. No, the people in that area hate that one. So I, I think it's a yeah. concern. Yeah, I sense. really do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, then let's take that one off the table. If we if we are happy with other options and so, they don't need yeah, five out of okay. us, then. So then that leaves us with four. Better balance, new district plan, balance prediction, and distributed school. So we eliminated Provo 2022 school board? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. All right. Any other further discussion on this? Okay. Great. Uh, the next thing on our agenda, school fees, Derek. Okay, so what you got in front of you is, or for the board to approve, is the uh, first uh, approval of the school fees. So every year we go through and by law we have to have the fees adopted and approved by the board by April 1st. And so this is going to be the, uh, that we've gone through the same process like we do every year. Um, schools gave input based on what fees they needed adjusted. Um, and um, we're having to run this uh, concurrently um, or parallel to the bill that's being ran that would eliminate school fees. So even though we're doing it based on how the bill is... It doesn't eliminate every single fee though. Correct. It just so would be vastly draft over, vastly redrafted. Um, based off of what is approved in the state. So there's a possibility we would have to re-do this and re-vote on this again. Correct. So. Correct. Can you remind me, our cap in our district is 5000 Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those costs went up, though. Right. right. Well, I think we could have a lot of travel funds because we get travel back. Yeah. So it's I think travel is going back up, it's making it bigger, okay. which I'm happy about. I'm happy to see travel coming back. So, but remember, our policy allows for four activities um, before the, the, anything above the five thousand has to be covered by the parent. You know, so four activities are within that five thousand dollars. If they decide to do more activities, then they will have to bear the burden of that cost per school year, right? Correct. Not over like the lifetime of this. Yeah, of each school year. Okay. Devin, yeah, would like the performing arts trip at Provo High be concluded as one of the four? Correct. So if okay. they're in ballroom, then that would be one of the activities. So if they're in multiple activities, like if they're in ballroom and choir, um, that, that would be two activities, but it's only in charge of one trip. So, okay. Okay, so you're talking about the overall cap. There's also a family cap, too, is to say you have multiple members of a family going. There's also a family, overall family cap, too. What's that? I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's in state code. You know that. So we don't, we haven't we set a family cap before. Okay. Um, it, we can set a family, but it's, the code allows us to set a family cap. Probably yeah, because they don't remember yeah. having a family cap. Uh, we, we haven't, it allows for it, but we have not set a family cap. So it's not required. It's not required, but you can. And most of the changes on this, this year's fees are for travel and removing textbooks from the fee, um, which this next year is the first year that those textbook charges are not allowed. And that includes uh, digital, uh, music, all of that uh, kind of textbook thing. So when I taught the sports medicine CTE class at Twill High School, I charged a fee because I needed to teach how to tape an ankle. So that kind of fee, I, I, they could still charge for tape? Correct. Yeah. But That's not for a book. So they, they, a while ago, they had a textbook definition that included a lot of uh, instructional supplies. I'm just kidding. Um, so they removed those instructional supplies from the textbook definition. So textbooks are those books, licenses for software, music, things that would be considered an instructional material in the classroom. Uh, but these supplies do not include, are, are not included in that. So you can still charge for the tape, um, for notebooks, you know, any kind of instructional. And wasn't there CPR, I saw somewhere, a CPR fee? So there's a CPR certification fee, so in that help, in the health fees of yeah. the two high schools, they do have an optional fee that they can pay for CPR certification. 
Okay. So it's not a required fee, but it's one of those that they yeah. can get. I know it's usually only like $5. So. It's not very much. But they okay. do, I think it's a little bit more because they do bring in an instructor. So it's the card plus the instructor card. Okay, is there any further questions about the school fees? Okay. Consent calendar. <coughs> any questions on the consent calendar? Yes. <laughs> This is my favorite. Why? <laughs> 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 I'd like to see where it goes. <laughs> what kind of questions I'm going to ask? <laughs> okay, Derek, I have on the executive, oh, let's look too long. Executive summary on page six. Um, so it, it's the approved budget versus the working budget. Yes. Um, the yeah, there's a small discrepancy. Yep. So the approved budget, the way that works, is the approved budget is the budget the board approved back when the budget was adopted. During the year, the budget adjustments are made due to um, you know state grants, federal grants, carryovers, you know adjustments mid-year. Um, based on you know those those kinds of things and then what will happen is is the board will have a final budget approval that will essentially ratify all those final approvals and it will become the final budget the working budget will become the final budget yes eventually okay okay my next question is on page 11 for food services um, I um, how can students, I had this question asked me at Franklin, the students wanted to request specific things for lunch or breakfast, um, so how can they ask that and when's the best time of the school year to do that so that it doesn't affect the lunchroom budget? Yeah. So this is, I asked Laura, it was a great question, I asked Laura, she says uh, um, if you're talking like specific new menu items, yeah, they'll, those can be requested at any time, and they can look into that item to see if it's something that's doable, and, and they can make it happen. You know, not every request is going to be possible because they are also bound by constraints of they've got to have the certain nutrition counts and things like that. They just can't say, we want to get rid of the salad for a kale bowl, you know, right? Okay, so th there's there are certain things like that they have to follow based off of the federal child nutrition program <laughs> guidelines, but they can request those at any time and they will look to see if there's some, if something that can be incorporated. Yeah, and on the executive, on pages pages 14 through 26, should that actually be on the warrant report? Because that seems like something that. Well, yep, I accidentally grabbed that one and included it in there. So there are a bunch of transactions that are in the warrant report also. Yeah. Um, so I, it's just... Is it a replica? It's a replica. Okay. Yeah. So these were X. Okay. I, I saw that and I'm like, that doesn't seem normal. Yeah, that, that's not... Shouldn't, that was a replica. As I grabbed the individual files and combined them into one, I grabbed that one too. Okay. And then on, on the warrant report, on page one... Um, the background section, it said, um, it's HIPAA, it's a HIPAA law, but it shouldn't be FERPA. HIPAA prohibits names from being listed on the payroll, as names can only be associated with gross pay, but it shouldn't. So FERPA, I can go back and double check, this is something that's just been copied and carried over, you know, a long time. But FERPA regards mainly to students and student okay. identification, identifi identification, uh, personally identifiable identification. Um, HIPAA, I, I know really mainly do, has to do with health care. So, so I really, I, I'll go I, back that's to what I was wondering that. because if FERPA is students and HIPAA is health care, I mean, I'm sure it's against the law to do this, but is this the correct law? That's my so the and, and my guess is so if it, where this is saying HIPAA prohibits names being listed on a payroll report, 
on a payroll report, it includes other things like well, like health uh, healthcare deductions and 401k contributions yeah. and other things. And so we're saying, hey, we're only presenting this as names and gross pay. Yeah. And that's probably why that's saying the HIPAA piece there as, as you read into it is that if you do a full payroll report, it's going to include some of those extra things that really yeah. is personal to that individual. Yeah. Um, so my next question is on page two. So we paid over $143,000 to Jerry Steiner, I'm assuming for cars or trucks? Three, three trucks. It was three trucks in our maintenance department um, and their vehicle rotation that they, that they replaced. Okay, and then Life Map Assurance Company, is that life insurance I'm assuming? That is life insurance for the district funded piece of life insurance. Okay, that's all my questions. Okay, any further other questions on the consent <coughs> Uh, next, we have um, the upcoming calendar, Google item, Google Calendar item. Kindness Week is this week. Jennifer, do you want to say anything? Um, we appreciate everybody's support with that, and uh, I think we're going to hear more about that tonight as well with what's happening in our schools. But it's a citywide thing for everybody. It's not just a school thing. And go to Provo Kindness on social media. Learn more. That's great. Uh, PTA Founders Luncheon, do you or Gina want to talk about that one? You'd be better than me. Okay. <laughs> um, the PTA is having a luncheon next uh, Tuesday at noon. And for PTA presidents, principals, all the school board is invited. They'd love to have all of you there. Um, district admin, I think, is also invited to come at that time. And they're going to have a nice lunch from Maggleby's Fresh. Fresh. Yep. And, uh, and their rolls. I don't think we have rolls, but there will be chocolate cake. The Magby rolls are the best. The cake is so good. <laughs> <laughs> I like the rolls better than the cake, too, Terry. I'm on your side. <laughs> They're both great. Okay. Uh, we have our board retreat, <coughs> a.k.a. really long day Send meeting. Send it to <laughs> um, And that will be Friday, February 25th. At the <laughs> Uh, how how can we change the name? We we can figure that out. Well, that's a good yeah. idea. <laughs> uh, can I make a motion? Can we? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it later. We'll get, we'll just, we can probably just rename it. Just, yeah. Submit your ideas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, retreat. Retreat. Torture the session. Sasquatch <laughs> meeting for for uh, <laughs> retreat. Retreat. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> that's that's that. Retreat. Okay, um, so I need to bring to your attention for Tuesday, March 8th, it was brought to my attention today, but that evening at 6.30, it's the Republican, Utah Republican County Caucuses. Are you going to that, Terry? Nope. <laughs> However, that does affect a lot of people. Um, the, the, uh, I looked at all, I asked Terry if that would affect the Utah United, United, uh, United Utah. It doesn't, and the Democrats meet on March 22nd, which is our next one, but it's, we meet in the morning, so it doesn't affect the timing. So we, I've been asked if we could meet on a different day so that we can have more people sure, attend. Should we do it Wednesday? That's, or do we want to stay with the Tuesday evening and just move it a week? Is anything going on on the 9th that would be a problem? February. This is March. Mar Mar yeah, March. Uh, there was some I did. I did plan a, a, a trip to, so that I would fit, but feel free to. On Monday, on the 15th or the ninth. Uh, I think I'm going the ninth through the 20th. So it doesn't matter for you. Melanie, you're out of town. I'm out of town on the 9th, too. We have some standing committees who'd like to participate in board meeting, an advisory committee that meets that night on the 9th. Oh. So maybe the 15th. Are Tuesday night better for more people to go to the 15th? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you okay if we meet? Can you think of anything that would prevent us from meeting on the 15th? There will always be something. I think if, if the board can get a form there, then book it. Okay. Is the legislative session over in McKay by then? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, let's plan on going to March 8th or March 15th for that study session and business meeting. Yeah, it's a March. Um, Bonnie, we can make sure that that's updated on the website. Okay, thank you. And then study session on Tuesday morning, March 22nd, and then we have a joint board uh, and city council meeting on Thursday, March 24th at 12 p.m. And if you will submit things that you would like to discuss. Can you post that one? Um, I don't no. know. They, we normally would, but they want to do it soon, so they said they would. Okay, so it's going to be via Zoom at noon. So if you have things that you would like to discuss with the city council, if you'll send them <coughs> in my direction. Okay. Anything else for our, on, this, on the Google calendar item? Seeing none, we, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Can you get back in the other place for my start minutes. off? With, we've got like three to five minutes. Go so rest of the room and do what you need to do.